<clears throat> so Ryan Plaster, he made another video. Um, <clears throat> he kind of, I don't know, it's kind of changing my perspective. Uh, of course, that's what this channel is about. It's about growing and never having the same beliefs and just always evolving instead of staying stuck or worse, devolving. Um, <clears throat> we all know John 3.16, okay? But what, what is it referring to? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, and of course we've gone into this years ago where the word so is not used as an emphasis. You know, like in the movie Clueless, so like like so bugging, you know, like, like I so hate this or I so want that. That's not how it's used right here. It's used as a comparison, like... Just as this is, so is that. So, for God so loved the world, it's not It's not for God so loved the world. It's as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so also loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, have eternal life. Okay, so first of all, that's what we need to get straight if you didn't already know um, that grammatical error. That's not even having to look at a Greek Bible or whatever. This is English, okay, sixth grade English. Now, <clears throat> the issue is what, is, what is he talking about right here? Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Well, in the book of Numbers, um, that's what happened. Um, let's see. The people spake against God and against Moses, you know, wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die? You know, like the people are kind of getting upset. They're wandering for 40 years. Um, and here's the thing. So, um, and then God got pissed and sent a whole bunch of snakes to uh, kill everyone. Um, you know, that's my whole Yahweh is Satan thing, but that's a different video. Here's where it gets interesting in the book of Numbers. It says, and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, that when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Okay, so Moses had a, a brass serpent rod, basically, uh, a pole. And um, uh, the God, um, if you looked upon it and you were bitten by a snake, you live. Okay, so Jesus is comparing himself to this scene. Okay. Now, what happens in the book of 2 Kings? Okay, we have Hezekiah. Okay, and what did he do? He was a good king. He, he obeyed the laws and he was very righteous. But what did he do? He removed the high places. He broke the images of, you know, uh, the idols and cut down the groves, the Baal and Grove worship, as we know, and break in pieces the brass and serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. Okay, people were worshipping this serpent rod all the way up until the book of Kings. Like, for hundreds of years, they kept Moses' magical rod that, you know, healed you if you looked upon it after you were bitten by a snake. And so what did this righteous king do? He took it down, because people were starting to worship the rod instead of God. I did not mean for that to rhyme. So here's here's where it gets kind of interesting. What does the book of Psalms 146 say? Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. And that word help could also be um, salvation. This literally says, don't put your trust in the Son of Man because he's not your salvation. Okay. Why does the Bible say, don't put your trust in the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation? Is Jesus our Savior, or is God our Savior? Was Jesus the Son of Man and the Son of God? Are we worshiping the Son of God, or are we worshiping God? Well, Jesus says the Lord and I are one. Okay. But still, in the book of um, Isaiah 43, 
God says, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So this is saying that Jesus is not the Savior, but a messenger of the Savior. Like, people are praying in the name of Jesus all the time. But what did Jesus say to do? The Lord's Prayer is not, I love you, Jesus. It's the Father. It's only the Father is mentioned in any of Jesus' prayers. No one said, pray to me, Jesus. He said, only through me, and if you believe me, then you can be saved, because I'm the first one to give you truth ever. And everything in the Old Testament was veiled. Okay, and now we go to Isaiah again. <clears throat> it says, I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. God the Father is saying he, he's the one who blots out our transgressions, and he's the one who will not remember our sins. Why? Because he sent Jesus to fulfill that mission so he could do that. <clears throat> we are not, <clears throat> apparently, like, I, sorry, I just, I just saw this video today, and it's, I've messaged him a lot, and he's kind of help, helping me clarify it. But what does this mean? Uh, seriously. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and they looked upon the brass... And then later on in Kings, they started worshiping the brass. And Jesus is saying, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up and worshiped incorrectly. This is what that means, apparently, in this philosophy. <clears throat> it's is insane. I, I, I told him, like, this is crazy uh, stuff, but logically it kind of makes sense because Jesus never said to pray to Jesus. He said, you'll do miracles in my name, but... Who's giving you the miracle? Who's the creator of the universe? God. Jesus in his, is a, as a man in flesh who is the son of God, you know, from a virgin birth. The only begotten son. Okay, sorry, like, as, as you can tell, I'm like figuring this out as I make the video. Because I'm kind of stumped right here. And uh, I was curious what y'all's thoughts were. So Jesus is saying, just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness and then y'all worshipped the rod instead of God, then Hezekiah had to, you know, get rid of the rod because you forgot about God. Just like that happened, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up and worshipped instead of believing in what I say. He says it's going to happen in the future. This is going to happen. The Son of Man will be lifted up over the Father. What does the book of Mark say? No one knows the time or date or the hour of the end times, not even the Son, only the Father. <clears throat> so, I'm not saying Jesus is just a messenger. <clears throat> Sorry for the coughing. I, I don't talk that much, so <laughs> when I do, it's, it's uh, yeah. I'm not saying Jesus is just a messenger. He took all of our sins. He was the one who fulfilled the contract and perished the law of Satan Yahweh and reminded us of the the Father God Elohim of Genesis 1. Once again, this, this ties into my other videos, but you can see my train of thought. Why would Jesus compare himself to Moses lifting up the rod in the, the wilderness? What other possible explanation does he compare himself to that for? And why do all the churches never mention it? They just say, for God so loved the world, they read it grammatically incorrect all day because they don't know the word so is referring to the verse right before it when it happened in Numbers 21, verse 9. Okay? People don't want the churches, the elite, whoever knows what's up, don't want you to know that John 3.16 is, is comparing it to Numbers 21 with Moses because the only logical interpretation is what I just said. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent and people worshiped the rod, so will the Son of Man be lifted up and people worship me. But those who believe in me, and what, what is he, why, oh, I'm sorry, those who believe in me, what is there to believe? That the Father is our Savior. The Father is who we should be praying to, as Jesus prayed to in the Lord's Prayer. It's the Father. There's no mention of Jesus in the Lord's Prayer. And that's the only prayer Jesus told us to pray for. 
But you see, all these redneck churches, in Jesus' name, I worship in Jesus only. The Father is scary and evil. Well, the Father is scary and evil because you don't know Yahweh's Satan. So there's all these multiple conspiracies are converging right now for me, if you couldn't tell. Yahweh is Satan. <laughs> I mean, why would the loving Father of Jesus send a bunch of serpents to kill people? Because it's, it's not the same. I, I don't know. But let's, let's ponder this together. I, this is not a conclusive video. Once again, this is one of those videos where I'm throwing it out there. But I've been talking to him, and <clears throat> he seems to, it, it kind of explains it. The king removed the brass rod because people were worshiping it. And so Jesus is like, just as Moses, just as the rod was worshipped, so will I be worshipped. But that'll have to be taken down because it's God. Jesus was flesh. God created the universe. They are one because he's a pure messenger. He only spoke truth. He only was pure, never deceived. But he never once said, pray to me. He says, you'll do stuff in my name, but pray to the Father only. Sorry, this concept is just, you know, oof. it's mind-boggling is the term. Take it easy. And soul-boggling.